Well, Bert. Yes, sir. How are you this morning? Pretty good. Uh, your boys are voting a tax increase up there. I thought you were supposed to report those things and have hearings on them. Voting a tax increase. <laughs> I'm needling you a little bit. I see uh, my old fiscal experts down here in the Treasury and Budget tell me that you're all getting ready to give us a deficit about $5 billion, uh, without any of our defense expenditures. For 67 Yep. And uh, they say that they're just completely loose. I thought I was pretty liberal, but they say that uh, from the way Bobby Kennedy's going over in the Senate and his education hearings with Morris, and the way you all are going in the House, that Mahon has lost control, and that Mike Kerwin is kind of teamed up with with uh, uh, this boy Fogarty and uh, John McCormick. Didn't want to jump on those good uh, brothers of his, and he can't stop them. He's talked to them. I've talked to John. I've had Fogarty down here. But our old fiscal experts, the old career boys, sent me a note yesterday. It looked like it's going to add about two and a half to three billion to our budget. We already got a two billion deficit, one point eight, and it'll be larger than that because they not haven't given me my sales authority for small business yet. I just got two months. They just they haven't got that over. We ought to be putting some of that in private hands, that big 30, 40 billion, but I haven't got that yet, so it'll run a good deal more than the billion eight predicted because they're late in getting it to me. Uh, they're supposed to be getting a rule, Howard Smith, the Republicans are all opposing it because they don't want to. Uh, they advocated in their time, I was now 55, 56, 58, Bob Anderson, 59, and then Johnny Burns did in his 63 report. You read that, haven't you? Oh, yeah. And if you haven't got those statements, I want you to look at them and keep them in your pocket, what they advocated, right. because they want free enterprise, and they want the banks to hold this, and they don't want the federal government to all accumulate all this debt. And then uh, when we try to do a little of it to hold it down, well, they raise hell because they want to make us have a lot larger deficit. But that's not what I'm talking about. I'll send you that sheet today. I just want you to carry it in your pocket to, so you can show people when you're back in the cloakroom. Uh, what they said all these years, and we're just trying to take them up, and then they won't even let us agree with them. When they, we follow Burns and Curtis, they won't let us agree with them. They said this in the 63 Ways and Means report, that we ought to sell a lot more of these securities. Now we try to sell them, and by God, they raise hell. Uh, but uh, uh, we're going to sell them, but we're going to get to selling them late. In the market, we've got to be careful. Can't dump them all in the market once. We're not going to get the authority until May. And uh, one damn tornado in Louisiana cost us $100 million, that Russell Long thing, and things like that. But here's what the old career boys say down at the lower levels. They have got a chart which shows that uh, your GI Bill, the education, is going to run about $300 million over the budget. It's over $2 billion total, but 300 this year, and it may run more than that. Shows agriculture is running 400 and something over the budget. Uh, Fogarty is getting ready on health and education. Some of it's construction, too. Oughtn't to be a dime spent for constructing a building now because these labor unions have gone wild. They've got their wages up to 8.68 an hour uh, on, on building trades, on bulldozer operators. Uh, and everything's tight. Copper's tight. Aluminum's tight. Lead, zinc, tight. But they want to build a building so this thing get tight. But Fogarty's going to go in between five and six hundred million over the budget. And then when Morris and Bobby Kennedy get through it, maybe a billion. But anyway, the minimum that they figure now, and assuming no increase in poverty, they figure it's going to be a two and a half billion minimum over. Likely three. If it's three and I got uh, a billion eight and then I don't sell some of this paper, say I got another, I fall short a billion two, I'll have a six billion deficit written in there. Uh, then McNamara, if he has to, and this war keeps going, he, it's conceivable he'd have to ask for five or six, so he'd have a 10 or 12 operation. Now. If we did that, we'd have to add 10 percent on to the damn bills and probably make uh, inoperative for the time being uh, 
during go during Vietnam, try to make you an operative this uh, uh, investment credit and probably accelerate depreciation on these big buildings and apartments, just uh, them only, so we can stop this construction. We don't want to even think of it. We haven't. We won't take another look at it down the road after we get it behind us. But the point I wanted you as the as my expert in the Congress, in both House and Senate, I wanted you in your whispering Sam Rayburn way to say to the leaders, the old timers, now Howard Smith's demanding that they put the impacted area back for uh, Arlington, Alexandria, two richest school districts in America. And if we've got to go in there and take an out-of-date formula and put the impacted area because they got the Pentagon, everybody's got a highest per capita income in the nation. Hell, of course you can't. You got to do it for Arkansas, and Mississippi, and Louisiana, and Texas, where they don't East Texas anyway. If they can do it for these rich districts, they're going to sure have to do it for the poor ones. And they tell me that you'll be lucky if you get by with the three billion just from the actions you already taken, the subcommittee on appropriations. This week, you're going to do it up a billion with agriculture. With HEW, Fogarty is going to do about five, six hundred million t tomorrow. And I think they ought to be told that they, without knowing it, they're voting a tax increase. Now, you boys, uh, it's fine for you to be out here and say you want to build a big new building for NIH, and I'm for NIH too. We've given them so goddamn much more money than they know how to spend. It's fast, it's running out of the ears. They have to get together about this time of the year and see how they can get rid of it for June. And I have to call them in and say, please don't have any June buying. But Fogarty, just, he, they give him an honorary degree and they give him an award. He gets old Mike Kerwin and the rest of those boys go along with him and, and they just vote any damn thing they want. But anyway, the point of what I'm saying to you is this. As a fiscal expert, you can, you can stand on these figures pretty well. Johnson says he's going to have a billion eight deficit. Your guess would be that he'll have a billion two more on sales of security that uh, the market doesn't take, or he doesn't get the authority until it's too late, or uh, uh, he doesn't sell as much in his stockpile as he thinks he's going to sell. It's always optimistic. So there's three right there that the Congress has already either sent to him are taking steps that indicates a commitment, another three. So there's a six billion deficit right there to start with, when it looked like a billion eight. Now, what, what is this three billion it's already sent him? Well, it sent him 300 million roughly in GI. It sent him 41 million in the, in the deficiency bill already passed the House on the impacted area. Uh, it's uh, sent him, uh, uh, 26 million for Coast Guard, already passed. Construction too, it oughtn't to be a dime's construction. You oughtn't to build your mother's uh, bathroom now, with the way things are going. Uh, agriculture about 400. Uh, Fogarty subcommittee has done written it up, and the full committee is gonna vote on it today, and it's going uh, Mahon thinks that he's gonna fight it, and the Republicans are gonna fight it. But he says Laird kind of trades out with them and plays politics and gets along with Fogarty, and they think they'll add a minimum of five or six hundred. Well, if they add six hundred to it, there's six and four is ten and uh, three hundred GI. Now, then you got your civilian and military pay raises. Your civilian pay raise is already passed. Uh, look over there and get me that little figure out of my inside coat pocket there. Uh, I mean, Bill, here, Bill Moyer, uh, the, um, here's, uh, I'll just read you this in coffee. The tax table shows congressional action thus far, including committee action, stating that it'll increase the budget by 1-1. One, one. It authorizes further increase in 67 appropriations, although these may not be enacted in the same amount of an additional $300 million. And these are not all the tables show the possibility of further add-ons of additional $700 million to $1 billion from House Action on Labor, HEW, and the military pay raise. The sum total of all these increases is in excess of $2 billion for what you originally submitted. 
Congressman Mayon holds a meeting next week of the full committee to discuss the subcommittee's tentative markup. In addition, our staff has provided him with appropriation language, which we believe might accomplish a large part of the expenditure reduction. By this time next week, we should have a fair reading on where we stand. But here's what he takes. Now, you take this down. You got a pencil? Yes, sir. Civilian pay. Approved by the House. Half year's cost we did not put in. We started January. They started in July. Extra cost $290 million. Employee group life insurance. The House version. $88 million. The GI Bill. We can't guess, but the minimum, 255. It could be over 300, depending on how many apply. And it looks like a good many because we're bringing them back from Vietnam and discharging. We got, can't keep them but a year, and they come out in June, so they're liable to hit us all in June. Uh, user charges that we won't get, 71 million. That's meat, inspection, poultry, tobacco, cotton, and grain. Revenue loss, graduate withholding excise tax, we lost 10. Federal Employees Compensation Act amendments, benefits higher than recommended six. Impacted area in deficiency bill, supplemental, 41. Agricultural Appropriation Bill, 401. Pass the House. Civilian pay raise uh, as approved by the House, the added cost of Rivers Amendment Military 390. Uh, authorization Senate Armed Services, Nike X 218, Nike X. Coast Guard authorization signed into law. March 30th, 23 million. I made a statement on it. Preschool development, elementary, 19. Reported by House. Airlift packages to federal personnel overseas, 11 million. Approved March 21st. National Air Museum. Approved by the House, February 7th. 11 million. Labor HEW appropriation bill, due to be reported, we are told that forwarding efforts would result in increase the budget between five and 600. If it's 600, uh, you got it. Now, if it's 600, it's 24, 25, two and a half billion. It's somewhere between two, four, three, four, and two and a half. Now, in addition to that, we think that we'll lose a billion or two extra slippages on sales and things. But uh, the point ought to be made is, boys, uh, like old Nick Longworth used to say uh, just a minute, Mr. Abrams said the three most valuable words in the English language is just a minute. And I won't say to you, all of you running for election, you just think you're cutting a big hog mass here when you're going out here and voting for this five, six hundred million for NIH and extra benefits over and above what Johnson's done. I've got five billion in this budget for education. I've got five billion in health, more than they had when Kennedy was president. I'm at ten billion in this budget for health and education alone that wasn't in when Kennedy had it. And notwithstanding that they're gonna add five, six hundred million more. And Bobby's gonna add more in the Senate, he and Morris and that group. So I would let them know right now that uh, they're not going to carry a deficit, this president's not, of any ten, twelve billion dollars like Eisenhower did. They can't afford to do it. And I'm going to come in with a goddamn this tax increase by ten percent, everybody's tax bill, and uh, make inoperative these other two provisions. And uh, they ought to think about that before they vote this. Mm -hmm. Well, I hear uh, you're going to have to come down to Arkansas and uh, campaign for me in the primary this year. I've got a fellow announced against me, says I'm close to you and the administration. 
Well, that'll defeat you if you're close to me. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm damn sure. Are you going to Houston with us tomorrow? I won't get to do it. Oh, you ought to do that. Now, you, you won't ever have to do any campaign. I'll guarantee you this. We're going down tomorrow evening after you close business. We're coming back tomorrow night in my plane. Uh, you don't have to be uh, prominent or, or, or make a speech or raise hell. But if you go, I guarantee you won't ever have any opposition. If you do, it'll be well financed. We're going to have a thousand people in that place. That and our.